Hello everyone and welcome back to another furniture flipping video. My name is Samuel with Cedar Pine Designs and in today's video I rescue this nice solid wood dresser from the trash and I turn it into something nice and modern for somebody's home. So let's jump straight into this one and get our hands dirty. I'm starting things off a little differently for this video. I'm building a custom base for this dresser because it didn't come with any legs or any base to sit on. So I'm gonna build a nice mid-century style base out of red oak. I'm going to give it a 15 degree cut so that way it'll sit at a tapered angle and it'll give it a little bit more of a modern look. A little trick to get all your legs to be exactly the same height, I put a stop block on my chop saw that way I can get a consistent even cut every single time so that way you don't have any wobble issues. In order to secure the base to the bottom of the dresser, I'm using my Craig pocket hole jig to create some pocket holes so that way I can drill and screw this base into the dresser and you have to use the right length screw so that way you don't put a hole through the other side of your material which can cause you to have to do more patchwork. Before you actually attach all your pieces together using the pocket holes, I like to pre-drill holes because I've had the experience with wood splitting and wasting material if you don't do that. I'm using my DeWalt palm router with a 1 8 inch roundover bit attached to it to clean up all the rough edges and soften them up so that it doesn't look so sharp and it just looks a lot cleaner. Now it's time to remove all the drawers and all the doors so that way I can get a good look at how this thing looks on the inside and I can start cleaning it up and removing all the hardware. So I am going to be creating my own custom hardware for this one because I couldn't find any online that matched exactly what I wanted and to cover those holes because they're so spaced far apart. So I'm going to clean it with some TSB degreaser and follow it up with some water and then I will take those hardware knobs and I'll put them away and save them for another project later. Using a leaf blower to get rid of all the big cobwebs and all the debris inside is a pretty good tip so that way when you go in to wipe everything down, you're not spreading out all this garbage and collecting stuff on your rag. So it just makes it a little easier. I'm removing the doors because those are going to get sanded down to bare wood and I'm either going to stain them or I'm going to wax them. But either way, I'm painting the body so I don't want to get any overspray on them and I would just like to put them to the side to protect them. I'm using my Festool Orbital Sander to remove the material. I did start with 150 grit sandpaper, but it wasn't doing a really good job at removing all the material. So I switched to an 80 grit, removed all the material, and then went back over everything with 150 grit and 220 grit just to get rid of all the swirl marks. For the body, because I plan on painting it, I'm just giving it a quick scuff sanding with 150 grit sandpaper just to give it a rough surface for the paint to stick to. I'm using some masking tape to mask off a couple of areas that I don't want to get paint overspray on because if you get it on the rails especially, it kind of tends to make the drawer slide a little rougher, so I just try to avoid those areas. After applying the masking tape and scuff sanding the body, I go over it with some wood filler to fill in any deep scratches and gouges so that way it doesn't show through the paint. Once everything is dry, I go back over it with my sander and 150 grit sandpaper. Typically I like to hand sand this part, but because there's so much area to cover. I'm using my sander just to make quick work of it, but be careful not to remove all the material out of there because then you'll have to go over and refill it again. For this project, I'm going with my favorite color combination and that's a stained wood color with black limousine leather paint by Bear Premium. It is a built-in primer and it has a satin finish and it's my favorite go-to paint whenever I want to do anything dark. I always dilute the paint with some water because I use an HVOP spray gun with an air compressor and if you leave the material in there, as thick as it is, it's going to come out like an airbrush and it's going to take you forever to paint your piece. As 
As I've said before in my previous videos, these disposable paint filters are a game changer. They just help to keep stuff out of your paint and off of your finished pieces so that way it can keep you from having to do too much sanding. I'll typically do two to three coats of paint with scuff sanding of 150 to 220 grit in between each coat and then I move on to my top coat. I'm painting the base black because it's made of red oak and it's obviously a different um, species of wood than the veneer on the front drawers and doors so I didn't want to go and stain and have different off colors so black it is. I took some scrap wood from my shop and just played around with it and cut them up into different shapes and stuff to find the actual drawer pool that I liked and I ended up going with a drawer pool that was around 21 inches long for the long drawers and I'm not exactly sure maybe 16 inches for the doors but I cut them down to size and then I give them a 30 degree angle so that way you have something to grab onto once they're actually attached to the drawer fronts. This is where you want to scuff sand in between each coat when it's fully dry. You just want to use 150 grit to 220 grit sandpaper so that way each layer can stick to each other. I'm using a flat black primer that I found in my shop just to give these drawer pulls two to three coats of paint before I actually put my top coat. Because they are bare wood, they're going to soak up a lot of paint. I'm using my go-to top coat. It's Verithane's polyurethane in a satin finish. I'm tinting this one with the black paint because dark colors tend to leave streaks and cloudiness so by doing this you're going to prevent all of that. Because I like the color of the natural wood against the black I'm going to go ahead and just give this a wax coat so that way I can bring out the richness of the wood and create a very nice contrast. To apply Howard's Feed and Wax you use a dry cloth to rub it on and you let it sit for about 20 to 30 minutes coming back with a separate cloth and you wipe it off in the direction of the grain and that's it. I had to cut this scrap piece of wood and add some pocket holes to it so that I can attach it to the bottom of the dresser because after flipping it I noticed that I didn't have anything to actually attach the base to because it was missing a large piece so this is going to go ahead and correct that. Because I don't like to rely on the pocket screws themselves for all the strength, I do go ahead and I use wood glue on everything that I attach, so just keep that in mind. Because these handles are custom, I don't really have a jig or any way to actually place them on there, so I'm just using a metal ruler to make sure that they're even on both sides and the tops, and then I'm countersinking and pre-drilling a hole through the bottom so that way I can screw them down to the drawers. I'd like to take this time to thank everybody who stops by and watches all my videos, leaves me wonderful comments and all the thumbs up. I really appreciate it and I'm trying to get a little more consistent with my videos so that way I can get more content out to you guys a lot more frequently. So thank you guys again and I really appreciate it. At this point the only thing really left to do is to attach all the drawers and all the doors remove all the tape and get everything ready to go so that way we can see what this thing looked like before and what it's going to look like after. I like to add Howard's Feed and Wax to all the drawer slides and all the drawers just so that everything goes in nice and smooth and you don't have any binding issues. Now that the doors are back on and all the drawers are in, let's take a look at what this thing used to look like before and what it's going to look like after. I'm super happy with the final results of this project and as always let's go over all the numbers. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video I did get this piece for free but I did spend $40 in material to make the base and paint, sandpaper and consumables I'll add another $20 seeing as I have all of that in my stock giving me a total of $60 and 6 hours of total labor. I then sold it for $500 giving me a total profit of $440 or $73 an hour. 
Definitely a very successful project and great profit margins. I'd like to thank everybody to making it to the end of the video, getting all the numbers, and enjoying this video with me. I really enjoy making this content for you guys, and I'll see you on the next one.